money mindset rulers are all about well first of all let me let me repeat what what sacred money archetypes are about they are a shorthand formula for talking about a set of behaviors actions beliefs that are kind of natural to you um, and live with you your whole life and there's various different forms of archetypes and there's all kinds of different assessments but I happen to use one that's based on sacred money archetypes and so it's all about your relationship with money when you discover your archetypes but what I've discovered over the years is all of my clients also have the issues in other areas of their life so when I talk when I started using sacred money archetypes as part of my methodology for working with organizing um, it made huge difference in the way I communicate with the client the way the client interacts with their stuff knowing where and when to push in terms of uh, pushing you to let go of something or hang on to something it it just kind of freed up all that energy that we spent worrying about how to communicate about the stuff because I could use the words that would reflect that um, archetype and it would resonate more with the clients and they were having an easier time letting go of stuff and or we would stop fighting over the stuff that wasn't that important to them. Um, each of the archetypes has some key pieces of information that help you determine if it's you. And we all have the number one archetype in our in our um, life, but we also have two others that support. So they act as a three-legged stool. So if you're weak in one, the others can help prop you up. Um, so I've decided just through the end of the year, um, we'll be going over one of the archetypes each week, just so you can start seeing how they interact and maybe get curious about how it might help you with your organizing. Um, and or your money making because it works both ways. That's the brilliance of it as well. It helps everything your relationships, your relationship with money, your relationship with stuff, your relationship with relationships, all of it. And so it's fantastic. But uh, let me tell you a couple things about the ruler if you are a rule, if you end up being a ruler archetype. And that is, you know, sometimes you even though you're you're an empire builder like that's the natural thing is for you to build empires where everybody thrives it can show up in some funky ways occasionally and you sometimes don't feel good enough to be the person in charge of all of that um it is the thing that drives you that always striving to be more but fighting the not good enough feeling, right? And so that shows up so often in my client's clutter. When you are feeling you're not quite a good enough housekeeper, or you aren't quite sexy enough for your partner, or, um, you know, so you end up with a bunch of extra clothes and, and beauty products. It can show up in, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses in the yard. All these places show up when you are afraid of not being good enough and it's covered up with stuff a lot of the time. Um, and the other thing that is, is interesting and, and plays into the clutter a lot about ruler archetypes is they are often um, afraid. Uh, not in the super fearful of everything way, but that they might be uh, in danger of not having enough financial resources. And so, there's often things that are designed to help you make more or save you money in the moment that you purchase because it's supposed to help your future financial um, situation. It may or may not be true, um, but really it's about feeling safe and protected from the potentiality of not having enough financial resources in the future. So it can show up in some interesting ways um, with a lot of stuff you don't actually need it's just fear-based purchasing so the goal is to help you innovate and achieve and empower your wealth with grace and ease that way you define your actual space and the things in it with grace and ease so that you get to spend more time helping people make money and less time on your stuff and setting up protective barriers with your stuff. It's interesting, right? It's all connected in these, these interesting ways. Um, 
I love that ruler archetype people are great at entrepreneurship. Um, and that's who I like to work with. I myself am a ruler archetype. And so it's a perfect fit, right? You teach others to create uh, a situation where they can support themselves and thrive and hopefully help other people thrive with the work they do as well. So it's impactful in a big way. Um, and it can be idea focused and it could be money focused and it can be stuff focused and it can be people focused, but really it's about leadership. How are you going to lead the people to the thing? It's about teaching them to do something better that they can sustain long term. So I love the ruler archetype for those reasons. It's courageous, visionary and determined and it's all about helping others thrive uh, while you thrive yourself. So it's perfect for entrepreneurs, right? Um, you do want to be careful though, because you can feel like there's never enough money. There's always more that could be done. Um, and sometimes you don't live in the moment. You become a workaholic. Uh, I have that tendency. I must say, I often set myself up to work very long days and forget to take time for fun. Although a lot of times the work itself is kind of fun. So know that that's the other reason it makes for great entrepreneurs. If you'd like to learn more about your sacred money archetype, let me know. I can send an assessment. Um, I'm just going through an update of some stuff and I'm hoping to have a, a, a PDF version available for everybody that to, to download in the next couple days. But in the meantime, let me know if you're interested and I'll send you one via email. Um, anyway, can't wait to hear what people discover their archetypes are and um, see how we can help all the areas of your life work better together because you know what they are. All right, take care. See you next week.